First of all, yeah. you're in Homedale years ago. Would it have killed you to call a buddy in Middletown? <laughs> I, was, I was three miles away, at most, in, uh, sitting in my house. Already a fan. I, I could have used the company, let me tell you. Would it have killed you to just reach out to a brother and say, we're having trouble with some of these tracks, come on over, we need your wisdom? Or was that just too much for you? Uh, like I said, I could have used the company because I was sitting there suffering by myself most nights, you know. And, uh, and I had gotten into this sort of vampire-like sleeping schedule of, of going to bed around eight in the morning or seven in the morning and sleeping till four and then writing, writing all night, you know, and this went on for at least an entire winter and, uh, uh, until I suffered from severe light deprivation and, 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 <laughs> and, and tried to switch it around a little, but it was, uh, it was a long, lonely, long, lonely visual. Somebody, in 1977. Somebody <laughs> said uh, all he had to wear was that white T-shirt, and I said, that's no T-shirt. Back then, those were called undershirts. <laughs> Life looked rough in that house. It looked like a, a little bit of a prison camp. Um, and what are your memories of the place? Just shag carpeting and bad food? and, and Well, there was all, it was always bad food, but, uh, but uh, the place, it was actually it was, a, it was a beautiful house that I lucked into. For like, I was on 165 acres, and I paid like $700 a month rent, and uh, uh, so I, I sort of lucked into this fabulous farm, you know. And uh, it's all, it's all, I believe it's all McMansions now. Something but, <laughs> about it. Yeah. But it, but the house itself was this big, roomy sort of farmhouse, and it was big enough for to set the band up entirely in the living room, and uh, you know, it was, it was a. It was it was a frat house, you know. There was it was just, it was just the guys, and and you know there was serviceable furniture and and boxes of cold cereal all over the kitchen, and and macaroni and cheese for dinner, and uh, but it was uh, it 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 served it served its purposes, and uh, uh, I spent uh, quite a, you know quite a bit of time. I guess I lived there for several years. And uh, wrote, wrote, wrote some pretty good songs there, so. <laughs> Born to Run comes out, cover of Time magazine, causes guys like me to say to people, yes, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. It becomes a source of great pride. Right. And what were the stakes as you sat down to record Darkness? Well, part of the stakes were that uh, it also caused somebody at the IRS to say, who is this guy and why hasn't he paid any taxes yet? <laughs> so, 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 so that was a problem. <laughs> people finally, people, they, they found out that we existed <laughs> because we had all been living off the grid in New Jersey for so many years. I, I'd never, I'd simply never met anyone who'd paid taxes, you know. You never and, flew an airplane, I, any no, of you. We, we never flew... I don't believe anybody in the band has ever was ever in an airplane until we had our first record deal, you know. Uh, uh, and they and they flew us to Los Angeles, and we were like, you know, kids on a magic carpet. But uh, um, uh, but it was uh, it was a funny period of time, you know. Be you know, it was because uh, uh, of the long stretch in between records. It was the three years, and and. Uh, uh, but it was it was the, a lot was good about it. One, I was out of the way, which I liked. You know, I, I even after the success we had with Born to Run, I was never I, I never stayed in the center of things. You know, I, I was we were down here and and down here in 1977 was a long ways away from New York City, and uh, nobody bothered you. You know, you just you and you had the locals and and I pretty much went back to living uh, the way that I lived. You know, before I made made the made the records, and and that that suited me and, and satisfied me uh, at the time, and I believe it was good for the music I was writing. So, and you sat down to record Darkness, and you say in no uncertain terms to members of the band, this will prove whether or not we're worth it, we're good, we're that. Well, I don't say yeah. that to anybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to make the fellas nervous, so I'm not saying it, you know. But uh, I'm thinking it to myself, you know, and uh, 
uh, it's like I said, it's we, are, we are in the show business, not the tell business. So it's all about showing, showing people what you can do, you know. And, uh, uh, and at the time, you know, we'd kind of been written off as, as, as record company creations or one-hit wonders or flash in the pan. Or, uh, uh, and, you know, it was quite a few years in between records. And, and so it was a moment where you... I felt I had to de- you had to deliver something substantial, you know, and, and it had to be more than just a good record. I felt and you felt like it had to be definitive. We wanted to make a record that if you were interested in in rock music and the stakes that were being played for in popular culture and rock music in 1977, it was a record you would have to go through. You may not like it, you may like it, you may think one thing, but it was something that would, you know, it was it was a, a a, 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 a marker of some sort, and so that was the kind of record uh, I went in pursuing, and which is why, you know, seventy songs later, we were we still <laughs> we were still struggling to find it, but uh, we weren't trying to make just any record. We were trying to make a very specific and e- essential record, you know, uh, uh, and that's what we that, that's really what took a lot of the time. Talk about your process. Talk about control. You you say uh, the the quote is you were oppressive and obsessive during the recording of Darkness. <laughs> what did you put well, your I colleagues through? I like that all through? the time. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know obsessive that they you know, that that just came with my. It was sort of where your OCD uh, 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 comes in handy. You know where where you'll just you're a dog with a bone, you know, all getting a hold of a bone, you'll just go on, you'll just gnaw on that thing until it, it, until it's right, and so that was sort of helpful, uh, but it, but the, the level of intensity and the demand that it accompanies, you know, thank God everybody was young men at the time, and because it, it demanded your sort of 24-hour fealty, you know, it was, uh, and because I had no life, I, I didn't think you should have one either. <laughs> and, so, and so it was all music, 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 you know. Uh, I, I still hold a lot of that to this day. And, and thank God, you know, we, we've, we've learned how to make records better to where we can bring the same sort of intensity in a, uh, uh, and get the job done with, with a, a little bit less... Uh, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit less craziness, but at the time it was important, and the madness is 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 not to be underrated. You know, madness in the in the appropriate place, and and uh, at at the sort sometimes at the service of a, of of a, an aesthetic ideal can uh, uh, can push you into uh, 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 can he- help you get to higher ground sometimes. As an adult, as a husband and father and farm owner and veteran of carpools, <laughs> when you now look back on you in those pictures, those films, what was brimming and bursting inside you, what do you think? I usually think, like, man, I was really skinny. <laughs> use a haircut, could use a meal. I had a, I had a lot of hair. I had, a red, I, had, I had my Italian afro, and I was really skinny. <laughs> so uh, after that, you know, I, I recognize myself. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, in a lot of ways, I'm creatively, I'm the same creature. You know, uh, I pursue my work with the same sort of intensity and uh and joy i get the same joy out of it if not more and uh so that the young that the young man is very recognizable to me uh, uh you know you have a much broader life and, and broader experiences now which which is is essential to to prevent what would have been you know oncoming uh, insanity in a short period of time but uh uh but it's it's not unrecognizable. It's funny, you know. It's funny. It's fun to see see the guys and at us at a particular moment when we were involved in this sort of obsessive and and uh, act of of, of self definition and 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 of of trying to make something that was great. You know, we just wanted to we just wanted to make a record that that was like going to excite you and and animate your 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 life and make you. And be thought provoking and make you dream of things and make you recognize yourself and recognize the world around you and uh, want to be a part of it and want to be engaged and active and and uh, 
uh, you know, th those are all things that, you know, and, and, you know, that was, the thrill was in creating something that would do that. And that's it's the same thrill that I have today. You know, those are the, those are the goals. You know, I want to get as far in your soul as I can, and I want to shake you and wake you up as intensely as I can, and and wake myself up in the same in the same process. So, percentage of your fans who approach you in public to say, soundtrack of my life. <laughs> uh, you get a lot of that, you know. But uh, eighty, ninety. Uh, but you know, somebody has that saying. You know, whatever you've done, somebody has. <laughs> You know, if you've made music, somebody has that saying that to them. But it's it's a, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that was the idea. The idea was, you know, you wanted to be, uh, you know, a, a an integral part of people's dreams. You know, of uh, uh, of the things that help them get through the day. So that's I, I'd say probably maybe that's the finest compliment people give you is that you know you've been a part of my life really that was that was our that was what we were shooting for and and so uh you always like to hear that you know you always like to hear it. and you know i listened to the new arcade fire there's many a tip of the hat to bruce springsteen and his music and that's one of easily a dozen pieces of work on the market right now where the artists have said outwardly uh or through their work uh, this is because of, this is uh, a tribute to, this is thanks to Bruce Springsteen, which must be its own category of thanks. Yeah, it's nice. You, know, you always want to hand it on to uh, younger guys or, or whoever's coming along. You know, that's, uh, I think, part of what you, you know, I, got, I was influenced by so many great musicians that meant such a great, great deal to me and who's, you know, who I can never really repay, you know. Uh, uh, music is... It's it's so intensely personal, and it, it strikes you on such an a, such an emotional level, and you know that that you you it it, it leaves you feel it leaves you like feeling like you owe a great debt to the people that moved you that deeply, and uh, uh, it's a lovely it's a, it, it's a lovely thing to owe someone, and I think that. Uh, you know, when I see the guys that did that for me, and I've had the opportunity of actually meeting a lot of the fellows that, you know, the guys that did that for me, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful feeling, you know. Uh, so it's, it's, it's nice to think that, you know, hey, you, you did something and somebody heard it and they picked up a guitar and, 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 you know, you, and now you go, you know, I'll go out and see them and you'll see a whole different generation of kids just sort of in the thrall of, of. Uh, of, of, of what was so ecstatic and, and transcendent for me. And I get to see my kids experience it through their own heroes. And uh, you, know, you just want to hand it on, you know. And uh, so that's, a, that's always a treat. What about your country? You know, think of the world as it was in 77. Carter was president, installing solar panels on the White House roof. Yesterday, after Reagan took them off, President Obama announced, guess what? We're going to put solar panels on the White House roof. And we've come full circle. But, you know, the, the polls, our own poll, 56% of adult Americans don't think their kids are going to have it as good as they did. That's a crushing, a soul-crushing stat. 70% of Americans are pessimistic about the future of the country. This is, in many ways... Since we do have a soundtrack for life, this is Bruce Springsteen's America. This is your America, too. And what do you think of what's become of it? Well, it's very difficult right now. I think that, that you know, the, the economy has shifted. Uh, well, I, I guess we've sort of, sort of gone from running this American business into running this American casino. And the economy has shifted in a way that it... it, it it's benefiting the very small percentage of, of uh, Americans at the top, squeeze the middle, and ignore, ignores the bottom, you know. 